All right, Justin, are you ready? Ready. Because we don't make the deadlines, I actually do, but uh, we all know what time we're going live, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your problem is, Justin. Um, you are my problem, Mr. Uh, as always. Um, you know, um, it's, I do appreciate that you, uh, that you put your best clothes on, coming in on your best behavior. We do want to look our best uh, on this magnificent... Uh, magnificent finale live scream uh, today. So, um, how are you doing, my esteemed colleague today? How do you feel? I'm all right. I've been dying, but uh, what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? Uh, yeah, I, um, I've been, I've been kind of dying myself a little bit, um, thank you for asking, uh, but now I feel much better. Uh, I, I did get a bit burned out <laughs> with all the, <laughs> with all the, uh, the weekly videos and all that, um, uh, so, but, but now I feel a lot better and I'm back to writing, uh, uh, the, uh, seasonal reviews as well as the, um, in a nutshell video, so, um, Got every error coming up as well for those wondering, um, and and all that. So that's that's how we're doing. Chat, how are you guys doing? I see Alyssa is already in. Welcome, Alyssa. Um, who else is in the chat today? Uh, be fun uh, to see if we got uh, our uh, regulars as well as the newcomers. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. if we have any lurkers out there, longtime viewers uh, who uh, who haven't said hi yet, I encourage you on this fine finale day uh, to uh, come out of the closet and say hello. Um, of also course, say, as always, we want your we sound. Yes, we want your opinion or your feedbacks and as to how we sound. So uh, yeah, and look at that. What do you know? Right on cue. Just like a screeching dragon on Dragonstone, we've got Uriah <laughs> popping up in the chat, as always. Uh, I think, I think uh, if you're looking for consistency, guys, don't watch House of the Dragon. Watch Uriah uh, in the chat. That's, uh, that's where you're going to get consistency. Just stare um, at him. <laughs> just, just look at him. <laughs> there he is. And it's black and white uh, pride. So, um, uh, Uriah's already well, got in his opinion. Going for you. Sorry? Oh, sorry, keep going. You're, yeah. You're, and, you, you caught uh, up with what I was saying. Yeah, no, yeah, I was, I was, I'm getting to, to all of it. Um, yeah, Uriah's already, uh, uh, posing a good question here. What we, what we think of this episode and, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I have, I'm, I, I have, I have new things to say for once. <laughs> Um, and I won't be repeating myself as much uh, this this stream uh, as before because I feel like uh, a lot of episodes have just been the same bunch of nothing going on. But but in this episode, things actually happened, and I'm really looking forward to talking to it, uh, talking about it uh, to all of you uh, more than I have been about most episodes. So uh, this is going to be great. Um, Black Eagle is asking if uh, there are going to be more nutshell videos coming out, and yes, there will be. Um, as I've uh, mentioned before, I did get a bit burned out, uh, a little too stressed, overworked. Um, it went, it came to the point uh, that after a month or so, uh, or five weeks of of making weekly videos where I do everything myself, basically, I uh, I was a bit burned out. I'd been working a long days. Long nights, little sleep, not enough exercise and all that. And uh, it came to a point where I, I, I sat down to write and every time I wrote just, you know, a sentence or two, I had to lay down and rest for half an hour because I just felt exhausted. 
Uh, and I didn't realize this until I sort of got better. I just slowed down for a, for a few weeks, and uh, uh, and now I'm I'm feeling back uh, back to my game again. And it's it's only now that I really realize how sort of burnt out I, I was. It's never happened to me before, so it's a fun new experience. <clears throat> to, to burn out as a, as a writer it happens to me about like once a month so I it's see. a fun experience to have <laughs> yeah yeah no writing is intense man um not not to um not to feel sorry for myself or anything it's just uh it, it's it's fun of course you know we choose to do this uh <laughs> but um it's it's nice to feel better that's 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 positive i'm trying to bring into um but yeah, so um, um, before we get into our opinions about this episode, uh, chat, please let us know what you guys thought. Uriah's already um, uh, unveiled his positive um, outlook on this episode, and I am inclined to agree. There are a lot of positive things to say. I've been talking for like minutes without uh, breaking up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to you, Justin. Um, how do you feel uh, overall about uh, about this episode? Um, yeah, <laughs> take it about away. About this episode <laughs> and the season as a whole. Oh well, I guess we'll get to the season. I guess uh, we'll start with the yeah, episode. Once well, we get that's to right. the episode, um, like it's 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 hilarious how like they're. Not not that much happened this episode. There was still a lot of talking, and still there was still even some setup for the war and whatnot. But because of the fact that now that we ha are at war and that there is like something going on that we don't know what's going to happen next, or it's it it, it feels like hey, like I'm I'm I want to pay attention now, um, and so. Like and I, I still struggled with this episode. <laughs> um, there were a few parts that I would, I kind of rolled my eyes at, or just like they, they, they were just doing. It what started done off before, as the worst episode in the whole season. I have to say, and sorry <laughs> to cut you off, but like it, it started so horrendously. I was like, oh my goodness, here we go again. Uh, but maybe that made the uh, the second half of the episode so much better. <laughs> I, it's just they have so much to do now, and that there's there are things to happen and things that did happen. So, yeah, uh, it's it's just one of those things that uh, uh, it it just blows my mind to see how much that makes a difference for an audience viewer after spending the last nine episodes like teetering. This one, I was by the end of it, I was like, okay, what's happening? And then when it ended, I was like, oh, great. <laughs> no. Now yeah, and wait. also that the... the okay, a lot of... I, I wish... No, sorry, go on. More, I, I'm mad that this was an episode, like, two or three. Well, I guess that would have been too quick. I feel like we should have been, like, way, way faster into all this with... Uh, with all the setup and whatnot. Like, I don't... Drama as we got but uh there was a lot to enjoy in this episode so yeah uh that that's that's something to think about um, yeah uh yeah do you want to start uh i've seen uh, people if in the chat as well please let us know what is your favorite part of this episode we'll get to the season uh near the end but for now we're just going to focus on just this episode favorite parts of this episode and we'll kind of look at the positives, look at a few of the negatives, and then we'll look at the season uh, as a whole. Uh, right. So let us know right now. Positives, go. Exactly. What are your highlights for the episode? And I've already seen Alyssa drop uh, drop the one about Vagar uh, flying over Eryx uh, uh, at the end there, uh, be a big highlight. And uh, we will get on to that. I think that is by far uh, one of the, the best scenes uh, of the whole season best bits uh, of you know everything coming together story wise cinematography wise even though it's quite dark and sky but you know uh it, it made me feel like okay it made me feel things you know positive things <laughs> so i'm totally with you Alyssa. i i really enjoy that and and also the part where vegar is like lurking in the background um as uh, uh lucera's arrives at storm's end uh, i really like that too kind of build up that 
really well done. And guess what? It, uh, it's uh, where it's a part of the support. It's a part of the um, uh, story where they are following the book very closely. And it is just, I think, another bit of testament as to how <laughs> poor <laughs> these writers are. <laughs> um, they can only <laughs> they can only produce good TV when they're following the book extremely closely, apparently. Um, but I mm. loved it because I've been looking forward to this scene the whole season. Uh, I was afraid we might not get this until season two, but there you go. Uh, we got it at last, so I was quite pleased. Um, but let's move on to highlights in a more chronological um, uh, order. So, <clears throat> first thing that I've noted down is that Rhaenyra's outfit is sick. I love her uh, queenly outfit. Um, reminds, me, reminds me very much of Viserys. Uh, she looks so much like her dad, uh, which is nice, kind of, from a nostalgic point of view. You shouldn't be too seduced by nostalgia, of course, but uh, that was a nice touch that the viewing experience did not rely on, so... <laughs> I enjoy that. Uh, the costume design in general has been pretty good, um, I would say. The, yeah. There were a few complaints, I remember, in, the, in episode one. Um, and I, uh, people were talking about how it looks different from Game of Thrones, and it certainly does. Um, I, I think especially the, the Kingsguard uh, are so detailed uh, with their armor and all that. It looks really good. Uh, it looks almost too perfect. It's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not dirty enough for me, uh, but maybe then again, they are literally shining white knights. Uh, so it, it might just make a whole lot of sense that uh, they, their armor is pitch perfect um but yeah overall i think and uh the coloring as well of the the outfits in general dresses being green or a uh, pink or black or red and stuff like that uh i thought that was really good so uh, yeah what do you think about the costume design in general this season i mean the costume design uh like that's probably one of the highlights of the show like is that I never felt too out of like the element from the show. Like there was no point when I was watching it that I felt like it looks awful or like that pulls me out of the show. Everything design wise and like, like practical effect uh setting wise, they do they go out of their way to you know, a lot. And I guess that comes <laughs> you know, uh yeah. but overall I'm impressed with how much detail they had because it it, the, the best part, if you're going to do references and details for f super fans and whatnot, you need to do it with sets and with uh, with background stuff. I, I I'm a very I'm not super like I'm against demon daggers and more for <laughs> like subtle things with like background stuff like paintings or or images or colors or whatever, just things in the background. Yeah. Um, uh, and they've done they've done very well with with, with like restraining shelf, but also having callbacks to certain things uh, that I don't notice because I've only watched half of Game of Thrones. Uh, but all, a lot of people notice and go, "Whoa, oh, I see that connection. That's cool." You know, and it doesn't matter too much, but it's a nice feel. You know, it, it gives makes you, that you nice feel, feel like they you, you know it. they so, thought it through and that they do. <laughs> this pay show attention. really makes you feel like Ned Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it. I think, I think it. It kind of. Um, I mean, it obviously, doesn't compensate for any shortcomings. Uh, but having those nice details, like costume and details and paintings, like you said, like whatever it may be, or little mentions here and there, um, or little sort of behaviors and hints and nods and all that juicy stuff, kind of makes you feel like they know what they're doing. Um, Obviously, in, in this show, they don't know what they're doing, but if they had known what they were doing, these details sort of just cement that feeling with me as a viewer, and that's, that's really nice. Um, uh, that, that's a really nice, like, comforting feeling, actually. I don't know if I've ever, you know, put words to it like that before, before you said it like that, Justin. So, uh, mm. yeah. Uh, Alyssa is mentioning the uh, painted table um, from from Dragonstone, um, and I I agree it's a beautiful table. Uh, 
he intends to be very aggressive in this war, whilst Rhaenyra wants to exercise restraint and caution and wants to just kind of go out guns blazing. Um, what did you make of, of that theme? Like how they handle the dynamic of characters wanting uh, to go to war, more or less? Hmm. That kind of goes saying how positives being uh, the war movement thing and was actually like in depth. And that was like, okay, that's I like your strategy meetings, that's kind of cool. Uh, um, yeah, and so we get a lot of people talking about like in depth stuff about war, about strategic stuff. You talk when you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, there was. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of like how, um, I mean, it's, it's, they don't really emphasize it uh, in the show, but I like how Otto, who's basically the engine behind the, the green movement, um, <laughs> he is uh, kind of, well, he's basically the mover and shaker of all of this. He's, he's the one who, the reason why this tension has even arisen in the first place and uh, why there is going to be war. Um, I like um, how um, he is kind of, he's totally playing, um, he's basing his entire strategy on the fact that Viserys was very peaceful and, you know, you can basically do whatever you want with him, uh, consequence free. And Rhaenyra being his daughter is likely to kind of, kind of carry on that... Um, cautious approach to war so he can really push the boundaries with them um because they will hesitate to engage you know in battle and all this stuff but uh he probably won't because he doesn't care about peace and stability he just wants power so um uh, it's a nice um um the nice like kind of dynamic that i wish they would have emphasized a little bit more um, but but it's there, so you know I, I like that. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, no. Um, hey, Sarah. Um, okay, there was a little bit of a network uh, issue there, but it's all now. Uh, it, it, it looks, it looks good. Yeah, that was, um, uh... <laughs> ah, uh, yes. Uh, Sarah hasn't seen 9 and 10. That's, uh, that's unlike you, Sarah. <laughs> You're always right on top of it. Um, okay, well, uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, but, I mean, avoid the spoilers here because they're, they're we're not gonna hold back, Sarah. Not, not even for you. <laughs> Um, okay, well, let's move on. Uh, there was the war and meetings, uh, which was quite interesting. And uh, I have to say, Eve Best uh, as Rainey's princess, Rainey's evil stepmother, she is a really good actress, huh? Like, in this episode, especially when she actually finally had something to work with. I think she's had some of the flattest dialogue I've seen in television history. Um, so she hasn't really, um, yeah, she hasn't really had anything to work with, but now she did. And I really enjoyed her performance. 
Um, and I don't really care about her walking around in her fierce dragon outfit. It's, I don't care about that. Um, it's just um, the way she delivers actual, you know, substance into the, into the episode. <laughs> that was uh, like kind of, I was like, oh yeah, she's, she's actually really good, isn't she? So <laughs> um, I quite enjoy that. Um, and what else? My last, oh, do, would you agree with that, by the way? Chad, do you agree with that? Eve Best as Rainey's uh, good, good performance? Oh no, that's, that's not supposed to happen, are you sure? God, that's, uh, that's, that's not good. Well, how, how is that even possible? Right, I, I checked the audio and everything right before we started and it was all good. How has it changed just like, just like that? Ah, okay, well, I'm checking it right now. Let's see. Yep, yep, all there, all good. Here in settings. Uh, so this is uh, this is awkward. Um, Justin was just saying that I will relay this to everyone while I check the settings again. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, uh, he was just saying that uh, he, he totally agrees with everything I said, and he 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 has nothing else to add because I already said everything, and I'm great and. No, he said that um, he doesn't have anything against the uh, performances of, of any actor, but the script and the direction has let them down at times. And I would totally agree with that. Um, I, I honestly, I think, I'm starting to think that uh, this, this guy, uh, Miguel Sapochnik, is a bit of a fraud. I'm starting to think that he... Um, is is you know like a university student who, uh, kind of, you know, just just goes for cinematography shots that's gonna look good in his portfolio later, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Kinda, kinda why I'm a bit um, call it yeah, disappointed with him as a contributor. Go, um. Well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not him. Justin, please try and talk. Ah, uh, no, he's not there. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is some bullshit. Yeah, how about yeah? How about you leave and join the? So sorry, everyone. I'll just uh, bring the um, bring bring the question to the chat uh, real quick. So far, uh, does that make it better? It does. It does not work, Justin. Sorry, you can hear me, but I can't hear you. This is really really bad. I end this thing. Let get it now. Nope. Really, really. Bad. Okay, well, let's see what the chat is saying um, for the moment uh, while I keep looking at these settings. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, they're on, on point. Um, uh, Rainy's uh, quirky smile is, is definitely a, a thing throughout the whole season. Um, I, I, I think. Uh, she does deliver a good quirky smile, doesn't she? 
right? Yeah, and the conversation about um, that she had Rainis with Corlys, really kind of substantial. Um, so, so I was quite happy to see that. What did you, what did you guys make of that? Um, what did you guys make uh, of of Rainis's um, function um, or contribution rather in this episode? Because yeah, I felt like it was night and day. Like somebody else must have written her dialogue this episode, honestly. It was so different. Uh, let's see about the, the audio again. Believe it. Believe we lost John. Ridiculous. But I want to hear you chat. I want to see you guys uh, discuss that. I want to see what you think about Rainies. Tell me about Rainies because I think it was night and day. Uh, do you guys actually think that? Because the, here's a theory I have. I'm starting to think that these uh, writers of these episodes, they kind of. Uh, it seems like they're all writing one episode each, you know, and then they're they're all self-contained these episodes. It seems to me that these episodes are basically all self-contained, you know, uh, by different writers who are not looking at what the other writers are writing, <laughs> and then uh, that's just um, that's just how how they do. Um, Seems to me. Justin, are you back, by the way? Uh, it sounds like you're really far away from what I can hear, so I'm not sure... Uh, where am I getting your audio from? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, but, but they can't, because uh, I'm, not getting, I'm not getting your audio through to the uh, streaming software. Uh, I have no idea why it doesn't get that, because it was right there. Just a moment ago, and uh, now it's not there anymore. That's pretty annoying. Uh, I try to exit and go back into the chat myself, and I check the settings a million times, and uh, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, no. Yeah. Um. No, no, it's uh, it's definitely not my internet giving out. It's uh, it's uh, one hundred percent. Well, okay, it could be the quality. Um, it could be the quality of of my audio, but yeah, it's because your your audio, yeah, it's not existing because it 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 doesn't come through uh, for some reason. <laughs> I'm restarting my browser. Let's see how how that helps the issue, and I'll be joining the Discord in. Um, so, um, let's see, what, what are we talking about, guys? What, what's the conversation like? Yeah, bad audio, that's, that's what it is. I think I'm seeing some agreement here from Virgil. Um, uh, the way Rainey's changes her mind every five seconds about being on Rainier's side or not was weird. Yeah, I kind of agree there. Like, in the end, she chose to go the honorable route, and, uh, she doesn't want to start the war, and she doesn't want to, uh, to kind of betray Viserys, probably, because he was the, the king, after all, and she just kind of goes with uh, loyalty in the end. Um, but the way she's been on Rhaenyra's back this whole time, and like, no, you can't do it, kid. Nah, 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 you're never gonna be queen. Meh, meh, meh. Sort of, um, it's a man's world, bitch. You know, I, I uh, <laughs> it's, it seems like a bit of a... <laughs> seems like a bit of a, a change. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can rejoin this this show on Discord and let's see what you audio back. Okay, say something, Justin. Not still not. Still not there. Okay, I'm gonna try something a little crazy here. Uh, I'm gonna do an audio uh I'm gonna do an audio capture and this and I'm gonna Put it at the same source, and then I'm going to see. What do we have, Justin? Are you with me? Justin, are you there? 
Yeah, not there. Still not there. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. And I don't know. This is. Do you oh. want to do this on your own oh, then? No, and that's I just, that's. I just keep I it in the chat. Yep. There you go. There you are. You're there. Oh. Suddenly, he's back. <laughs> Suddenly, it's like oh. magic. <laughs> there he is. But there's two of you, so I'm gonna mute one. Um, and <laughs> there we go. He's back, everyone. Somebody, and it might be you, Mr. Vulture. <laughs> that, <w> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I I just saw the um, the 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 meters started flashing uh, when you started talking again. So you're back, my friend. Oscar, am I am I back? Tell me. <laughs> yeah, Chad. Let him let I him see. know if 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 you can hear him. Uh, but yeah, should be all Please, good now. I know. I know you got to hear that you had the joy of not having my voice for a little bit. Uh, but uh, hey, I know I all sure good enjoy that. Come to an end. Do 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 you hear me? Let us know how we sound. Um, yeah. yeah, there's going to be like a minute's as delay. You're letting before. us know uh, what is the next topic you had. The next topic. Well, we've covered to... Rainies pretty much, so uh, let's not talk about her anymore. Um, let's uh, let's go through the episode real quick before we get to the the seasonal review. What are some big things we cannot miss about this episode in particular? Uh, another birth scene. Ah, huh? oh my God! I, I, how? I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think they were gonna, they were gonna do it. But they've blessed us with another vital birth scene to further their narrative. How about that, Justin? Huh? The the uh, Ramat says no. What? Wait, what? Seriously? But you're. The, the colors are flashing on my instruments. <laughs> my instruments. My instruments. Are you sure, guys? He's not. He's not there. Oh, let's. Um. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I think you should. Strange. You might just need to go on without me, my friend. Oh, no. I don't want to leave you, Justin. I don't want to leave you behind. <laughs> it's all right. No, but Just you are back now. Is weird. Yep, there oh, we go. The quality, chat is back. Quality is weird, but I have an echo. Yeah, because there were two channels uh, taking up your audio, so now there's only one because I muted it. And this is like two minutes ago, so uh, the, the delay. He's good. Okay. Yeah, he's good. Okay. So, let's back get right back into it. Topic. Hello, okay. everyone. You're beautiful people. <laughs> You're all beautiful. Um, you were saying the birth scene. Okay, I I didn't. I was kind of on the like. I was very strange about the birth scene. But what message are you? Are you talking about the the feminine agenda that you that you? No, no. It's just the pointlessness of it all. <laughs> it's my. Well, what agenda? You said agenda specifically. What agenda? I did not. I did not say that. Uh, I, uh, I, I said, You said um, further their agenda. You said that specific. Further than the narrative. <laughs> I said and another, being... another, well, the story. Um, no, I was being sarcastic because the, the birth scene oh. did not add anything. So, um, maybe cure your autism for next time and you'll get my sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so... <sighs> We don't have to stay on that all day, because it was pointless anyway, and then there was a funeral, and then she was crowned uh, queen at the funeral, despite there being a funeral underway, like, screw that kid anyway, he's dead, whatever, man, uh, I'm the queen now, look at me, um, uh, anyway, uh, there were a few stupid scenes at the beginning of the episode, we don't have to cling on to that too much, I, 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 don't like complaining anyway. Uh, that <laughs> I'll save for <laughs> for the seasonal reviews and every era videos. And maybe the in a nutshell videos. There are gonna be uh, avenues for me to complain as it is. So, um... <laughs> uh, let's see, um... The audio is, is good, very nice. Uh, and let's get on to the next uh, topic then. There's a big meeting at Dragonstone, again! Um, 
A big, big old <laughs> Dragonstone meeting at the bridge. Classic meeting point. Um, that's where all the cool kids go, apparently. And uh, I don't know what the Greens are thinking. Sending their 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 mastermind Otto uh, right into the enemy hands without any protection whatsoever. The group of Kings card don't count because they don't have. You know, it's, there's a dragon, and they know there's a dragon. There's, like, actually 13 dragons uh, on Dragonstone. So, uh, it just walked right into the dragon's den, quite literally, and without protection, and without guarantees, without any sort of anything. Uh, what, what, am I crazy, or did this, was that just a crazy risk uh, that should have ended up in his death and or capture? Uh... I mean, that was part of the plan with the, um, I mean, who else would they send to make the point, you know, it's not a I raven. I feel it's a little silly, a raven. Um, it, okay. What, Someone expendable. A raven is something expendable. The Grand Maester, for um, example. Eh. I, I'll give it credit that it, it, it would, it, in the same vein that, you know, they, they, they send the boys to go be the errand boys. Uh, it makes sense in that regard because it's like, okay, well, it they're sending in Otto because that's like, it's like a, it won't, it's not the same if you send just a raven or if you send no person. Uh, but I also don't like that this, this feels like just, uh, just a reflection of the scene it feels like they just wanted to be like, hey, remember that scene like eight episodes ago where where we yeah. did this exact same thing? Uh, it felt like a call doing a callback in the same in the same season is a little cheap. You know? A bit arrogant, isn't it? It's, it's, so I wasn't I wasn't super filled on that. Yeah, OK, yeah, no, um, if if that was the point of it, then, I mean, yeah, it's pretty weak, <laughs> I have to say. I do like, you know, when when important characters interact. I mean, we talked about this last week, right? Um, but this is probably not the way to do it. It could have been more dynamic, because there there's just so much, uh, so many errors in this. I'm going to have a field day uh, writing about this scene uh, for every error. I mean, first of all, you got Otto, who just rocks up and gives himself over to the enemy, basically, uh, with, without anything to gain from it. Or could he have potentially benefited from the martyrdom? Like, if, if he dies as a martyr, sort of, does that unify, like, does that uh, rally the realm onto the Greens' uh, side against Rhaenyra or something? Um, then again, he would never want to kill, like, die for his cause, because he is the whole, like, he's the power-hungry guy who wants to win so he doesn't want to sacrifice himself of course so i don't see how this makes any sense i mean at least they should have taken him hostage um and if they resist then you know just burn him because they have a dragon um they they don't really have anything to gain by letting him live do they and then there's the whole thing about Rhaenyra arriving on a dragon blah 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 and then she walks through the enemy group like a group of king's guard anyone could have just and should probably have killed her because she's she's a traitor uh, according to their perspective uh, and and the king would want her dead probably um, so it, it did, nothing of this makes uh, any sense uh, to me and then uh, yeah uh, in the end it's just like nope we are not gonna agree to anything see you later um, so it didn't come to much either although it does make sense for them to have an exchange of some sort so uh even if it ends in a stalemate my my thing is the the greens have been acting very very aggressive and for them to act so passive as if nothing has happened you know is the weird yeah. problem you know uh like i could see you know obviously Rhaenyra's side them playing passive because they they're the ones that haven't like done anything yet they they're the ones they've been playing passive this whole time yeah um and so seeing seeing the greens play passive doesn't really make sense after seeing last episode you know where they yeah. like literally killed some people 
and imprisoned a bunch of other people in order to try to take over the throne for themselves. And yes, I know that, you know, Allison made the big shit, the big, oh, hey, Aegon, I got Aegon, which means he's going to be king and you have to play by my rules. It it doesn't doesn't seem to work the same way in this episode where they play the full slow, the, the safety card. Um, if that makes sense, but yeah, you know, I, I guess it makes sense in, in, in some logical, in some logic, it would make sense. It doesn't make sense in like the line that we've seen from the show with how the, the greens have been set up in the past episode, but say lovey. Uh, okay. Well, if it has come to that, then our culture is truly gone. Game's gone, guys. C'est la vie. That's how we. That's how we deal with uh, with not good enough storytelling. Apparently, getting I'm laying way too hard into you right now. Um, and after <laughs> that, <laughs> Corliss returns. Up, oh, he's he's back just like that. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, by the way, it's nice to see you guys, uh, also agreeing there that, uh, that the, that the scene at the bridge of Dragonstone was a bit weird. And Uriah, on point as always, they did send the maester in the book. Bada bing, bada boom. I ah. called it. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, so that, uh, that was, uh, more, I, I think a lot of things are more sensibly handled in the book. Uh, although I could see how some of them would be hard to portray in the um in the show like when you translate it because actually i mean to to kind of uh, give the show a bit of a benefit of the doubt here like you in the book they can just send whoever they want whoever makes sense but in the show they have to put on a show so it kind of you can't just send the the grand maester right because it doesn't make as good of a show as if you send a main character however i think they have spent a considerable amount of time building up the maesters uh, they did change the maester, by the way. Uh, so now there's like uh, the, the 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 first grand maester. He must have passed away or something. And now there's a new one. Um, but anyway, like they they have spent considerable amount of time building up these side characters. So why not use them for something? You know, like like Laris or um, what's her face? Yeah, I even forgot her name. Missaria. Like these people have gotten so much screen time, but no build up at all. So maybe this could have been an opportunity to use any one of them. Like send Laris. That that's a good, good guy to send because he's he's the uncle of Rhaenyra's children, uh, and he was like his family were always close to Viserys and like trusted and in every way. Send Laris, even though he's a scheming weirdo pervert. Uh, it doesn't matter. Rhaenyra doesn't know that, uh, and it made more sense. Um. But yeah, um, I guess, did you want to touch anything uh, anymore on the, the bridge meeting at all? No. Or should we move no. on? I'm, I'm, I'm done with the bridge. <laughs> done with the bridge. We're over, over it. Um, then Corliss is back. Is Corliss comes back. Um, like, like nothing happened, although he actually has aged a little bit and he's gotten hurt a little bit. Off screen, of course, because who wants to see the adventures of... The most competent sailor on the continent, maybe in the world ever. Um, he just comes back whenever it's convenient, just like Lainor will in season two. Uh, I guess it runs in the family, am I right? Uh, what did you make well, of his comeback? I mean, we don't, you don't know that will happen. I mean, no, I on. knew, I, I, Dustin, I know, I know it will happen just like I know the policeman in Squid Game will come back uh, after the being shot. <laughs> in season two because this is the new age of of cheap narratives tv it's he's gonna be if, back in if season does two come back if okay look when I'm he not comes saying, back when <laughs> because you're, you, if they you if they if they if that change is used effectively then it's a good change if it's not used effectively then it's a bad change we don't know yet because like again, if you hadn't read the book, I wouldn't know that that was a change that Laner wasn't supposed to live, you know. And I would be fine with it. Like, oh, okay. I would think in the same vein as other people would that, oh, okay, this is a pr this is something that's going to come back and bite them later. Ooh, interesting. But 
because you have that change that that knowledge that makes this a little more difficult to like consider of like okay is this a change is this just something they did because why not or is this something that they're actually going to commit to as a change we don't know and i'm interested to see what they do with it i unfortunately after this season don't have the faith behind their writing to be satisfied with whatever change they add you know that's right. where i'm at yeah i don't think the change of him living is a problem i think the fact that him uh, i, I get the it. fact that they are going to do something they're going to fumble it in some way or yeah. make it not matter because they, they they have to obviously keep to some of the, the most of the um the story obviously and so like how much can you change if Lenor lives <laughs> is, yeah. is the real question well i mean i think there's a lot of to be fair like there's a lot of space for Lenor to to actually matter when he comes back they could do they could do a myriad of things for him to come back and have a satisfying impact on the story again uh but i agree with you i don't i don't think they will <laughs> based on what we've seen so far at how they've failed to create meaningful developments um so yeah i'm with you on that one um there's potential but the writing hasn't shown the same potential so uh we, we will see and then corliss comes back and kind of does the same thing like that I expect will be the case with Lenor that he just goes away and it doesn't really matter what happens when he's away and the point is that he's away and now he's back um so yeah yeah and he kind of doesn't really make an impact i mean he kind of he kind of uh, uh, throws his weight around a little bit, being experienced and all that, and suddenly Rhaenyra looks like a child next to him because the narrative needed it to. Like, it was kind of out of well, character. I mean, to be fair, episode. anyone would look like a child standing ah, next to him. Yeah, he's a bit of a boss, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> fair enough. But, yeah, I was just like, oh, Rhaenyra's that thing again. Oh, okay, back to old habits. Hey, I guess. they have a plan because of him. They have a plan That's now. true. So, That's true. And the plan involved helped. sending the little princess to uh, <laughs> Winterfell <laughs> and Storm's End to uh, uh, f on diplomatic missions. Um, you know what? Uh, I've already I've already gotten the sense that you didn't like that very much. Uh, that sending these okay, kids look. as envoys is not the greatest thing. Please tell me what you make of it. <laughs> my problem is that they are they're the ones be talking about how they need to be very careful and very cautious and how even Damon says how like our biggest asset is our dragons and then they just send out like th like three of their youngest dragons like hey yeah <laughs> the ones that they should be like protecting you know because they're not fully grown dragons right. obviously uh and also the princes who could be easily susceptible to being captured and or killed because there's a war that's about to go on, you know, and what way could you end a war really quickly than by kidnapping or killing a prince of the, of the, or I, I, I thought that we were going to capture them or something of that. Like, yeah. um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not against it. But it 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 just feels so silly. I mean, in the long run, in, I like in, what it led to because we get a really cool scene of the the little dragon fight, and it's it's a little it's a, it is still also a little silly because it's CGI dragon fight. But it I have to say that first shot of of the dragon of uh, what's the big scary dragon <laughs> names? I'm not good with names. I'm sorry, guys. Bigger. The of them flying away and you know actually having a, like a an aerial battle that that was interesting. That was a good way to use the dragons. Seeing them lose their control for a second and and them trying to outmaneuver another that that was interesting. And and then it led to death, which was also interesting because this that means the greens have the first blood. That means they're the ones that technically start the war so yeah that uh that is that matters that, that's a, that's an important death and it's yeah. a death that matters and has consequences 
it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I I'm a, I'm a little annoyed that this didn't happen in like episode like Game of Thrones was good about like having the crazy stuff happen happened on episode nine, so that episode ten could be a little bit of like other crazy stuff could happen in episode ten as well. But usually it's reaction to the crazy stuff happening in aftermath. episode nine. You know. It's, it's a lot of aftermath and, and ep, not epilogue, but like setting up for other crazy stuff next season and whatnot. Yeah. Here, it literally ends with the, this is, this is the fire. We, and, and it works, but I'm still, uh, I'm still on the fence about it is all yeah. I have to say. It wasn't perfect. Like I, I have to admit it wasn't perfect, but I think it's one of the, 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 the most important, I mean, yeah, it's like the most important development in the whole series, probably. Um, That's true. That, that is that, true. That is fair to say. That, that yeah, is like, one of the most important. Yeah, uh, and, and I like how they follow the book. Um, they did deviate, and I'll get to that. Uh, and, and I disagree with that deviation. Oh, uh, very frustrating. Uh, but the whole thing about, like, sending the, the young princess uh, to... to um, uh, to, to be diplomatic envoys, I think makes sense um, because they... Um, I don't know that the risk is as high from their perspective as you make it out to be, Justin. I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not wrong, though. Um, is that... Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. Do correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, I kind of I feel like Rhaenyra's kind of preparation for these boys makes sense. It's like... You know, you've got the honorable Baratheon, who who won't like, who who will take care of the the young prince when he arrives. Probably, yeah, that does make sense. Um, the most dangerous part of that journey is him not wearing a fucking hat when he's flying around in the in the wind and the rain and the storm like that. Jesus, you're gonna catch a cold and fall off your dragon before you even get to Storm's End. That's the that's the da real danger I see. Uh, but this is Hollywood, so weather is not a thing, um, unless it's an apocalypse <laughs> or whatever. So uh, he makes it. He makes it all the way, and then he sees Vagar. And I think about that. That point is where I would turn my heels and uh, bail, because that means Aemon is there already. You don't know what kind of deal has been struck inside that castle. Um, you're never. Like, if, if Eamon chooses for you to not leave that place alive, you're not. So, you, you best bail, I think. Although, he's I mean, a kid, to... he's there on a mission, might not be the easiest decision yeah. to make in the heat of a moment. So, I do get that he kind of uh, carries on. Well, I mission. can also see the counterpoint of him thinking ahead, saying, well, I can't run because if I do, then there is no way that the Baratheons right. join with me with us you know like if i run away what kind of impression is that gonna leave on <laughs> on, sure. on my mom you know and for Ooh. our house so I, I i'm fine with that uh, yeah. and again i'm more i'm a little bit of a nitpick against this it feels stupid for them to send them out but they gave enough reasoning to be like hey we want to go uh, and it's like uh, sure whatever and it leads to some of the best stuff in this in the show and some of the yeah. most important stuff in the show so when when it's like that i'm fine when yeah, it's you can not look, like you that, can look like past it has been the other girls, like eight I episodes. <laughs> I I did I That's was surprised I at how problem, so. Yeah. I was a bit surprised at how uh about the reception of uh of Lord Baratheon. Uh they did drop a very specific line in there uh that is straight from the book when he's um uh, talking about how he is not some dog that Rhaenyra can just whistle at and he'll come running. It's a fine little hint to book fans out there. Um, Uriah, please correct me if I misquoted that part from the book. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, a large, like all in all, the, um, the scene played out pretty much uh, satisfactory, you know, like uh, as one might expect from the books. And Uriah uh, and other people in the chat who have read the books, uh, what were your expectations going into that scene and how did that scene compare? Uh, I'd, I'd re be really interested to know if you guys uh, feel the same way about that scene. Because, um, uh, yeah, the, the way it is different is that, um, well, I guess, I guess, yeah, Eamon demands t 
to be compensated for the eye and whatever. So, um, and and then Lucerus bails, and then um, in the book, basically, what we know from the book, and again, it's just a Maester's perspective, so we don't know for sure, uh, is that uh, he rides off in the storm on his tiny dragon, and then Vagar just comes up and says, "Nope." you don't and snaps him out of the air and that's the end of those two um in this scene and this is my problem with this scene in this scene it's not aemon's choice to kill him and his dragon to kill lucerus it's an accident kind of uh it's vagar getting carried away after arax who also disobeyed his rider uh sprays him with fire and so uh vagar kind of retaliates in the heat of the moment and and aemon is trying to stop him um and i i i i don't like that this was an accident i mean the consequences will be the same in the end it's gonna be aemon killed luceris um that's that's the end all sort of of, of that action, but I would have liked, you know, it's more interesting when characters have agency, um, when characters make choices that have consequences. Um, he did take action, and those actions will have consequences, but I would have liked that to be a choice on his part. Um, I, I, I do appreciate that the show is, is going out of its way to try nuance things, to, you know, not make it the good guys against the bad guys, necessarily. Um, but this kind of nuance has, it comes at a price, basically. It comes at the price of character agency this time. And mm. I would have simply preferred it to be Eamon's choice to kill uh, Lucerus. It, it, it would say so much more about his character that he is so resentful about what happened when they grew up together um, and, and all that stuff. And he is prepared to, you know, kill for his side um, and his family. And, you know, he's, he's a badass mofo who uh, has the baddest dragon in the world. Um, and now it's kind of an accident and he's, he wasn't able to control the dragon. Which is, I mean, that, that does actually give some nice potential for the future where dragons maybe are not that easy to control because we've seen that now. And... Which is fair enough, that could be really interesting too. It's just that I would have preferred if he'd made that choice instead of it being an accident. What do you think? I, I can agree that it was a little... I, I, I was a little bit confused. I was like, so wait, what was he trying to do this whole time? <laughs> like, why was he like, oh no, I accidentally killed him. I didn't mean to do that. It was like... What you're gonna just accidentally? You're gonna, I know you said you want to cut his eye out or whatever, but you're chasing a, a little baby dragon with a boy on it with your giant dragon and like chasing him down, like right. Well, what did you think what was going to happen? Gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, at, seeing him be like, "Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. Ah, sorry about that." Um, I I wasn't like too. Like disappointed with that, you know. I was just a little, I was like off put by it. It was still interesting to see it, and I, I could see because this is helping develop Aemon, uh, him to be much more neutral, like you said. Um, because I could see, I could see if the book would play this character as a lot more just straight up, just <laughs> I am baby Damon <laughs> and I am messed up to the bo to the to the bone, yeah, yeah. and I, I just do whatever I want. <laughs> Uh, so I could see that having some, some diversity of character, you know, I, I, I whether or not it, it, it's good or bad, we'll have to see the next season. The consequences, like you said, will still be there. So, uh, we can see how that goes later on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, um, I'm, I'm actually, like, my hope is a bit revitalized here because, because of this scene and, like, them choosing Mine to isn't. actually do something, you know, make actual developments and it seems like somewhere deep down they know 
that important developments are important. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, um, I think that now that most of the time jumps are over, we're not going to see a whole lot of that anymore. So, uh, now actual events can start taking place because the, the, the build up is, is over, um, the time jumps are over. People are in position to fight a war here. Conflict is is uh, coming up, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to season two. Fight uh, very very weak season one, and guys, that conveniently brings us into the seasonal review part of the of the stream, right on cue as we've been on for an hour. So um, okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling way too good. About so uh, I'm gonna take it right to you again, Justin. <laughs> um, uh, what is your big takeaway? And that goes for you guys in the chat as well. What is you guys' big takeaway from the season? All in all, all things considered. <sighs> That's what my takeaway is. Just a big, deep sigh. <laughs> no, yeah, I there feel is you. A lot. There is a lot in this show. I'm not going to say there isn't. There's a lot. But this show is much, much more soap opera uh, than Game of Thrones ever was. For me, see, in the first four seasons, I can't obviously speak for the latter half. I'll get there, guys, so don't worry. I'll see how, how it fall down, falls and how it connects to the uh, later seasons, but uh, that being as it may looking at this show on its own i i have no feeling of like like wow i'm really excited i'm intrigued by what we had by the setup and by the like some of the stuff that happened in these later episodes the, the past two in particular um but none of the drama none of the like the sorrow moments or the things that I, that should be connecting to me really do. Like we talked a bit and I saw you guys mentioning in the chat about how some of you were impressed with some of the birth scenes and whatnot. And like, I, if there weren't three, <laughs> if, <laughs> if, the, if it didn't feel like, if it didn't feel like they were trying, they were doing a birth scene in order to try to pull a sympathy card. If that makes sense, the, the show does a lot of things which, with with like it, it it tries to cheat to get your sympathy, where it does something bad happens to somebody or you know something a situation happens and you, it, it it doesn't earn the sympathy or the sorrow, um, and I don't like that for a drama in particular where a lot of the show should be like the the build up and the tension for these characters and for the drama and the the relatability i don't feel that comparative to uh a different type of show like i don't know what's something i could compare this this is going to be a weird comparison uh going to be I anime, watched isn't it a long time ago <laughs> long time ago <laughs> i watched the first season or two of downton abbey which is a full on like British drama soap opera esque show. Um, now, the reason I watched that is for another very complex story to explain. But the, I watched it nevertheless. I'm not much of a drama guy, but I at least could see what they were going for and could connect to some of the characters, you know, and can remember the the, the struggles they had specifically because I re I could relate to them and how they were set up that way, and the situations were a lot more. Um, integral and much more like character thinning rather than just yeah. tacked on and this like she has a baby die and then they move on you know or uh, Damon's second wife has a baby and it gets set on fire and then he moves <laughs> on you know <laughs> like there some bad things happen in this show to people that don't matter or like to like for, like, for characters that it, in order to inspire the characters that do you know and it, that 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 doesn't always work in my brain I, I maybe i'm being nitpicky but that, to me that 
that is what I feel the problem with the show is. Is the, the, beyond other things, is that they they cheat that to to instead of making their characters active, they have like things happen like around them and try to get sympathy or a connection when there isn't any. Maybe you are I'm just a cold right. hard. A cold, hard, dark-hearted person, you know, that lives in an era, which is 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 possible. <laughs> well, but I'm that's, right that's down there I mean. with you, being cold and dark, uh, because I I think if you look at uh, the um, sort of tangible factors of this show and compare it to other shows, uh, you've you've got a lot of things happening that don't have any consequences. Um, and then there are, of course, inconsistencies that tie into this. So um, there are a lot of cheap thrills, whether you pick up on it or not. You feel, you know, s sympathy for Damon after Lena burns. Yeah, okay, good for you, but like, there is no reason to feel that sympathy. Just because he looks... Um, uh, sort of devastated in the moment when he sees her burn. It doesn't mean that it's a devastating moment in the story because it simply lacked build-up and after the fact it lacked any sort of consequence. Because you don't see any impact uh, on on either Damon or his children uh, of, of the loss of Lena. I mean, yeah, there's the funeral and whatever, but it doesn't change anything in the in, in big doesn't change the bigger picture um and and there are it lots of moments single, like this i guess <laughs> huh it makes damon single i guess it may i yeah well <laughs> i yeah that is a consequence he enjoys uh, <laughs> uh a lot not being married anymore after his wife dies yeah uh fine fine um yeah no that's true but uh to his person it doesn't really change him as a person and maybe okay okay to be fair like that is kind of a thing that he he has his wives die and one of them he even kills himself um and, and he's totally fine with that because he's a stone cold killer uh we know that about him uh, but his children like what about them like we spend a bit of time with them in that episode and the episode f that follows as well um get to know them a bit but then when they grow up they they are just npcs they don't matter and 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 that is kind of a recurring thing like it's 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 all over the place just no consequences you got Kristen cole murdering people left and right or like people attacking each other and there are no consequences to speak of so ah uh, it's um cheap thrills cheap thrills is a big takeaway do you have any positive takeaways uh, overall? <laughs> uh, like, did you uh, like how the dragons in House of the Dragon made a big impact <laughs> on the show? Huh? Maybe, maybe that. <laughs> uh, I mean, leave it to the last episode to make the dragons matter all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like I said, positives. The, the, Positives are the fact that the show like has so much potential tied into it. They have like the perfect sets and setup, and they have a formula that has worked before. You know, they yeah. have these great actors, and even the actors that aren't like amazing, they're they're they're, not, they're, they're mediocre at worst. At worst, <laughs> uh. They have a lot of good actors that, if they if they use them effectively, would be great. Um, they they have, really do have all the resources the they they could ever cool want to make something that great. Could matter. Some of them that don't that that focus on, but that's besides the point. Um, they have they have a lot at the disposal for this, and it feels like they they drag their feet because they want this to go on as long as possible. You know. It's that's the name of the game, it, isn't it? It, it? it yes, and that's just unfortunate to me because the reason Game of Thrones worked as a show was because of how like the pacing, at least in the first four seasons, was at like a breakneck speed, where 
just so much was happening. <laughs> so much was happening so fast. Have no say in. Some things have to be there. Some things have to happen. Um, they have to cover a certain amount of time and all this stuff. Um, I, I, I do feel like it's, uh, it's a flimsy excuse for like the biggest TV production in the world to, to say, yeah, but it's a hard job. It's like, yeah, it's a hard job. But you have all the resources in the world to, to do a good job. So I know it's hard, but you kind of you have to pull it off. And uh, just like I would say to any, any you know, top tier... You, I, I, I don't know if you guys follow sports, but if you say to the, the manager of Real Madrid football team, um, he's not going to come and say, well, it's a hard job. It's like, yeah, it's a hard job, but you have to win. <laughs> it's the same here. You have to make a good show. You have to put on a good show because you are the biggest and the best. You are the establishment. No excuses. Um will be enough, I'm afraid. Uh, but then again, you're not wrong, Virgil. Uh, it is a hard job. Um, I don't know if I could have uh, done a perfect job with the, uh, with the time jumps uh, myself. Uh, I think it's fair to say that a lot of people could have done, could have done a much better job uh, because when you, know, when you look at what they do with the screen time they actually get, a lot of the time, it's, it's not a lot. A lot of the time they are wasting time uh paradoxically you know uh they have a very limited sort of runtime they only have 10 hours to tell this 20 years of story um and they have to make time jumps to to cover a lot of that space so um it is just uh it is just a shame uh that they don't use it better i would i would say uh would you agree with that virgil um, I know it's hard, but it's, uh, yeah. So what do you think about that, Justin? I, I can't hear you, by the way. Justin, are you there? <laughs> I can, I could hear you, uh, just a moment ago when you, when you jumped back in. I can't hear you now, though, uh, but uh, where you were right there just a, just a moment ago. Uh, where did you go? Why did you why did you jump out? Justin, what was that for? Was it something that I said? Now I can't even hear you at all. Um, anyway, so uh, w w what do you guys think? Um, did the writing team did a good do a good enough job? Would you say? Um, would you say they did a good job, guys? Uh, the writing team. That. Um, I um, I think that they're going to do a better job next season, though. I have to say, um, because it it seems to me that yeah they've set themselves up to do a much better job next time, and. Um, uh, yeah, there, there won't be as many restrictions um, with time jumps and uh, they probably will be able to revise what they have now and they will be able to sort of um, ride a degree of success um, from the first season and they'll get a lot of feedback, of course, and they'll know, they'll kind of see what the people like. Um, so, so they'll be able to gauge the situation much better. So I would not be surprised if season two was better than season one, which is kind of uncommon, right? Like usually season one is uh, of a TV show is the best. And then everything that comes after is pretty bad or nowhere near as good. So uh, yeah, well, anyway, uh, yeah, I can hear you by the way, Justin. <laughs> Uh, and you, you're also, you're also back in the, back. yeah, you're, you're back, back. Uh, the chat can hear you as well now because the, the colors are flashing. Great. Good for you. Well done. Uh, Go <laughs> um, do you think, I was just talking about how I think that the next season will, um, will not be as big of a challenge, probably, to the writing team. 
because of uh, the the sort of alleged restrictions that most likely have held them back in terms of uh, what they have to cover and what they have to do and all these things. Uh, I would imagine they will have more freedom for next season. What, what do you think about that? Um, I mean, that's... I, I only get so much sympathy to situations like that where, <laughs> you know, you still have to look at it for what it is even if they have to, you know, jump through a bunch of hoops. Yeah. That doesn't mean I, I can, that doesn't make it mean that I can enjoy it any more than what you've given me, you know? So kind of, especially since I, we don't even know how much we can like give them in the, like <laughs> in the playing game, you know? Uh, exactly. It's a bit hard to know exactly <laughs> whose decision it is to, to have certain to include certain things and story development decisions and all that stuff it's hard to know who to blame in the end the writing is not good enough and whether that is the the fault of the writing team or ryan condal the showrunner or if it's hbo you know giving them unreasonably uh unreasonable conditions like uh, they don't give them enough time to write or enough freedom to tell the story thoroughly or whatever um, I think we, we don't have to point at any one person in particular, but we can point at HBO and say, look, your product is not good enough um, and the writing is not good enough. And we as viewers, we don't really care who's, who's what individual is at fault for that. Uh, but the writing sucks uh, <laughs> in the end. It's, well, it's here's terrible. the problem with that. The problem with that is that how successful is this being? <laughs> Right, but it's going to be successful no matter what, like, to, to a degree. Uh, like, I mean, clearly, this, this uh, product is not great uh, in the writing department, but it's still very popular because of marketing and because of superficial elements like cinematography and uh, acting and hype and whatever. So uh, there's a lot more that goes into it. But, you know, look at how unprecedentedly popular Game of Thrones became. And, you know, because it covered all its bases. And the writing was like the 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 core of of its fame. Um, it's not because like you know, ask anyone like why do you like Game of Thrones? Uh, and and it's not gonna be because like oh yeah, I really like Macy Williams as an actress. Like come on, like she was good and all, but it, it it's not gonna be that. And it's not gonna be because of dragons. And it's not gonna be because of cinematography uh, or sets and locations. It's gonna be because the story was interesting. Um, that is why Game of Thrones stands the test of time, and that is why House of the Dragon will not stand the test of time. Uh, the rewatch value is not there because of the quality of story itself and told. It looks nice, but you can polish a turd until it shines, but it's still shit. That is just how it is. You cannot escape that. So... Uh, I, I do agree that we, we, we do dunk on the writers a lot, and maybe we shouldn't. Uh, so Virgil has a point, but we do have to... I mean, that doesn't mean we can't bring up the fact, uh, the facts of the matter and compare it to Game of Thrones, for example, that we're somehow able to get off. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter who to blame. Who, who, who is to blame, but uh, blame is deserved. <laughs> anyway, uh, but let's not stay on that too long. That's very negative. Uh, what's, what's, um, what, we we've already... We're a positive channel here. We, we love being positive. That's what we're all about. Like, seriously, we would be nothing if it weren't for our positive, uh, our positive criticism. We are such hype men and yes men and Fan voice over here. That's the key yeah, to our watch success. Watch all of our videos. All of our exactly. videos involve nothing but positivity. That's that's all it is. No negativity to be found. No sir, not here. Um, okay, well let's move on then to uh, something which is a bit of a curious case: the use of the dragons in the sea. Um, we've kind of covered this a little bit, uh, but I can't get enough of your take on the use of the dragons. 
Um, this is the first time they've used the dragons <laughs> effectively. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, okay, that's that's a lie. That's 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 a lie. That's that's the blatant like too much. Uh, I like how they're used in the background for things, you know, and kind of like seeing this kind of upper echelon like kind of life. <laughs> it's interesting to see the Targaryen way of life with the dragons. That's that's not nothing. Yeah. Um. However, uh, a lot of the time we just see them as just intimidation like raw like roaring lions you know or just they they're just there as pets or we just it's it's either they're there in the background as like a horse or as a lighter or they're there to be a big scary like rar <laughs> but they don't do any right. they don't do anything we see them do stuff with with the the fight with the against the the crab king we see a little bit of dragon action. Like, that's, Does it count, that's though? Fine, I guess. Being as the, dra- uh, the crab feeder was all filler anyway. Yeah, well, you gotta take what you can get sometimes. Um, uh, yeah. And I feel like, the, the, obviously, the last episode is when they've been the most usefully effective. That, you know, oh, like, this is used for like a story plot point to give us reason to bring the princes in. Uh, it gives us a reason to have a... a, a um, Aemon and Lena to have a, a fight and an interesting one at that. And the, the, the there's just something interesting about it. We use them in cool ways, uh, and I just wanted them to be uh, either to be when they bring them in to be like giving us some time with them. I would have like I, I obviously we make fun of the how to train your dragon aspect of this show sometimes. Um, but if we're going to have filler, give us some filler to give us some connection to like the dragons, to the writers, maybe, or something like that. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So give us, give us something that if you're going to m- make some changes or additions, give us some, something that will give us more excitement or con- connection to the dragons. Or if you're going to use them more, if not, and stop pretending that there's this a huge important thing part of the show. I'm fine with it either way because you have interesting stuff that could be going on on the screen. But if you're just focusing on dragon CGI and by dragon CGI, I mean dragon flapping its wings and going raw that I don't Preach. care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I and I, I feel like they actually did a good job of that in the last episode uh, when they started they talking did. about like the war council. It's like, okay, now we got all these um, these uh, houses and the resources starting to actually matter a little bit here. We're having a discussion. Um, and it's not just talking about stuff to, to make sure that it's being mentioned, but it's actually like, okay, we are actually filling out the, the roster of players by mentioning these different players and the resources. And you could see how they will definitely be important later on. Um, although I do expect to see that eventually, not just have them talk about it constantly. Um, <clears throat> because perspective has been another big problem in this uh, season. And I, lo- I know you love to talk about perspective, uh, Justin, so let's move on to that. Um, guys, I don't know if, you, uh, if you've thought about that much, um, but um, House of the Dragon is very confined to King's Landing. Um, and the Red Keep in particular. And the locations... Um, the, the locations is one part of the perspective issue, as I see it. Um, we don't get to see a lot of locations that matter, that actually matter. And we don't get to see a lot of different people. Like, for all the casting that they've been very thorough to, to be very diverse in, the kind of characters are... The, the characters are not diverse enough. Yeah, paradoxically. Well, I don't think I don't think that's fair. I think I think the no. characters are diverse, but they're all doing the same thing. That's well, the problem. Well, that is that is part of it, like how they're not being diverse, because like you've basically got all these noble nobles picking, or like like sort of drifting towards one of two sides in a war eventually. Um, but what about the 
What about the people who fend for themselves? What about the small folk who don't care uh, about the, you know, whoever winds up on top of the wheel that is eventually going I to mean, crush them? You know, it's if you watch the first episode, if you watch the first season of Game of Thrones, that's the main focus of all of the first season is all the t perspectives of the nobility. The difference is the nobility are all doing different things and they're not all fighting for the crown. Some of them right, are but you've, you've got, giving up you've their got... life and going to fight on the wall. Some of them are going to try to figure out if some, if the if the king's hand was murdered. Like They're doing different things and interacting with other people exactly. outside of the sphere. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing that's different. Yeah. And I'm yeah, about to kill a bug, so excuse me for this loud noise you're about to hear. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, no, but but that's that's like uh, that's the perspective I'm talking about. Like those nobles in Game of Thrones season one, they provided perspectives of other characters too. So it, it's it's not that we're following them that's a problem. It's um, it's just that we're gaining a lot of perspective. Like through Arya, for example, she um, she's got the uh, the butcher's boy as her friend, and then he gets killed because he's just a butcher's boy. And then she takes sword lessons from a foreigner, from a foreign land, and we get to start getting these hints and pieces of information about the world through him. Um, and then uh, she sneaks around in the dungeons, um, and then she, s she sneaks out into the city, um, and then later on when... Uh, when Ned Stark is, is captured and all this stuff, she has to fend for herself uh, in the city, and she has, you know, she goes from being a noble to being right down there at Flea Bottom with the rest of the uh, the bottom dwellers, you know. Um, it's it, it, The point is not that she's a noble, but the point is that she's providing perspective from uh, non-nobles, or, like, just different kinds of perspectives. Um, but, she doesn't do that as I a think, character, though. She does that as a witness to these other characters. Like she, oh, it's, she, no, she does but that she, because the story she goes through pulls her a lot that of way, and she chooses to move that way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but she does go through those things. So she does become yeah. like she. She is part of the Night's Watch train that travels up north. Um, she's very much a part of that group. So just because she's a noble doesn't mean that she's not a part of that group. And that's where she meets her friends well, and. You know, <sighs> Well, let me put it to you this way then. Like, if we had Damon, like, if if the only thing we changed about this 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 uh, the season was like we have the characters going to different places or talking about other places. Like, if we added um, much more shady Damon type of things, like Damon going and meeting at like this underground, uh, like pit <laughs> to for like his like contacts and stuff. I don't yeah. know. Or if we had, uh. Uh, I'm trying to think of other characters. If we no, yeah, but that's a good see... good point because like he was uh, he was he looked like a man of the people in the beginning of the season. Like he had that his true. finger very much on the pulse of King's Landing um, and and um, uh, Flea Bottom. So uh, you, you see him at the at the um, pleasure house and and all that stuff, and and people know him there. He's the commander of the city watch, for goodness sake. So like uh, that's that's his whole his whole thing to know exactly what's going on everywhere and um and then you got uh him taking Rhaenyra out for a night out um in King's Landing as well so he's clearly yeah like he's part of that but don't get to see it much but there was potential there and I yeah I I, I do appreciate their effort to to bring bring the the world closer to us to make it more immersive that way they did fail at the end because what what we got was what like the play in in episode four <laughs> but they did the play again um where they just didn't provide anything uh it was just a more hollow exposition about um queen bad uh women bad and that was it it would have been interesting to to see some nuance to to the small folk to see what they actually think uh, who is for and who is against Rhaenyra's claim and Aegon's claim, respectively? You know what? What? What are the small folk actually thinking? Um, I, I don't buy that they're all just like, ah, a queen is a bad idea. I don't believe that for a second. Like, come on, you gotta do better than that. Uh, <laughs> hmm. So uh, that was a bit of a missed opportunity, but at least there was some effort. Cheers. All right. 
anything else you want to talk about as a season review? Um, what, what, yeah. what, what, what would you like to mention? What I would like to mention, I think my big deal is how they fail to create meaning of any kind, really. They don't make me care um, about the characters or the story developments. I mean, I do care about the story developments to, to some extent, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I would have liked to really be more immersed. I think immersiveness is what they fail at, and that has to do with pacing. It has to do with weak dialogue and uh, I think, character development. I think that mainly has to do with I think that mainly has to do with active characters because they're the sure. reasons that you get meaning. Yeah, exactly. Like the story is clearly not based around characters. Um, G- Game of Thrones very much was. Um, and uh, I mean, any good story is is based around character, interesting characters, and what they do. You know, uh, character agency and activity. Like um, here, it feels more like a lot of the time they've decided what they want this show to be about. Just like what you know, maybe the um, the book is about. It has its uh, themes and messages, and that's all well and good, but. The way they express these themes and messages is very clunky a lot of the time. Um, they'll have characters outright just say whatever the message is or the theme is. Um, like, uh, oh, a queen on the Iron Throne, that's a bad idea, patriarchy bad. You know, that's like, it's a very blatant way of saying that or portraying that message. Um, I would like to, to see it. Uh, I would like to be immersed and feel it and reach that conclusion for myself that the patriarchy is bad. I don't want people to tell it to me constantly and then over and over again because <laughs> they, they love to repeat themselves in this show, don't they? Uh, so, uh, and yeah, I, I would have... Um, I don't have anything against the messages themselves. I don't disagree with them. Like, uh, I, like I like the part where, where, where they show oppression um, uh, against the small folk, like when Damon goes to town on them and just like boom, boom, boom. Um, you've got like uh, gender roles and all this stuff. It's always interesting. Um, you got giving birth being a very dangerous uh, activity, uh, which I feel like it's not really portrayed uh, as a dangerous activity. It is in a lot of pop culture. Uh, we just kind of take it for granted that you know, yeah, you give birth and and then if you are very unlucky, then you have a complication. But no, it's actually quite common uh, to have complications, especially in a medieval society. And uh, mm. I like that they are trying to highlight that. Of course, I, I totally disagree with the execution. But there's nothing wrong with that theme. And uh, I like that they dare to, to go for, for fresh themes like that. For all my complaints, uh, I do, you know, I have to commend uh, the, inten- the intent. Uh, there, so um, uh, yeah, I I I um, I see what they're going for, and I agree what they're going for. Uh, I agree with what they're going for, uh, but I I'm I'm let down by the most of the time. I do have to say that there are some really good actors in there, like Matt Smith and Olivia Cook and Eve Best, <laughs> uh, that are doing a lot with what little they have to work with. And I look forward to seeing them in season two. Uh, I I do believe that they have a great opportunity to make uh, the show a lot better. I I am a little bit afraid that the way our culture sort of works is that they're going to get a lot of hype and appreciation for very much just the superficial things. And that they're going to get carried away with that and then not, you know, care about substance even though that's really what everyone can agree on is what they want if you if you ask anyone like would you like a substantial story or do you want cheap thrills everyone's gonna say they want a substantial story and then you can ask them do you want you know dragon fights and cool looking like whatever uh stuff and acting performances yeah of course everybody wants that too but substance above all you know, um, you'll you'll find no sane person who. who um, so I hope they don't get carried away with the superficial elements. They can bring us more substance in season two. But then again, I've, I've like a bit let down a lot this season. So I'm I'm not gonna 
have as high expectations uh, going into season as I did in one. Because uh, my expectations point- were f- moderated, but still up there because, because of the things that they'd said in e- interviews leading up to. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to let you go on there, uh, Justin. What, what did you think? Uh, what, what are your expectations and how were they, how did they compare to what you actually got? I mean, like, and the point that was made earlier about how um, a lot of the the struggles of this first season was the fact that the time skips were, you know, such a terrible thing to do. I feel like without that holding it back, we'll st- we'll, we'll still. I still think we'll <laughs> struggle in the narrative department, but this allows a lot more, like you know, a lot more dominoes to kind of fall into place rather than being so spaced apart, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I, there's at least that type of hope and things to look forward to. <laughs> I, I'd be curious to see if if people who, who, you know, look back at this show when it's done airing would be like, yeah, just watch the last two episodes of the first season and then just go to the second season, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I'd be curious to see how like just watch one or two like like watch like these like two or three episodes uh and then and then just go to see the second season um i don't know though we'll, we'll have to see yeah i guess we will have to see um well and in that case let's uh let's bring it on to rating the um uh the the episode and the season both Uh, And we do have to come up with a system of rating it, as always. Um, Well, okay. Like, we should at least give a number for the season. (laughs) I I think that's fair. An actual fun one. Um, And then, uh, what? What? What do you guys feel like? What do you want to do for for rating the episode? We've done seafood. We've done pizza toppings. uh, (laughs) Vegetables. Uh, what was it last week? I don't even remember. Um, last week was uh, what kind of car? Cars, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> uh, how about this time uh, we pay a little homage to to, Dame, uh, to Aymond and his sapphire eye and we rate this episode based on gemstones. Okay. I mean that's not interesting. Yeah, fine. Gemstones <laughs> uh, and rare metals, maybe. I don't know. That's not fun. Damn it! Damn it, chat! Help me out. Uh, <laughs> You're fired. Oh, We're yep. a streamer. And streamer. <laughs> um, what? How? What fun way should we uh, rate this episode? Give us some ideas in chat while we talk about. Uh, numbers like here's numbers, numbers for the season and as, as a we're whole. talking about the numbers let me clarify my rating system is a five is mid a five is like i could take it or leave it like there is a lot of good or a lot of bad or uh there's a little bit of good a little bit of bad it's like very very mid for stuff you know a, f- a lot of stuff a, that a I just like. in five is like a 7.3 uh, on imdb yeah <laughs> something like that like actual average yeah like it it would be stuff that other people would like and i could see people liking but i am like on the fence of liking it's definitely on the fence so for but that being said my number is going to probably be extremely low what number would you give it mr culture so um there's there there are a lot of good things about this uh, this show, uh, but none of them weigh up for the lack of um, the most basic things that the show needs to have. And when some when when a story lacks some of the most fundamental parts, that's gonna significantly drag down the rating. Um, you can have all the good acting. <laughs> you can have all the good acting and all the superficial elements you want, but if you don't have the substance, then you don't really have anything. So uh, I would say that the substance is what makes up the bulk of the rating, and then the superficial stuff is like the last couple points, uh, just like one, one or 
uh, sorry, 10 or 20 percent of the rating uh, maximum. So this show could have easily uh, been a, like like a nine out of ten, uh, like eight between eight and ten, simply because it has so much potential, and they have all the resources in the world except time apparently. Um, and but but since they don't have the substance, I'm gonna have to 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 give it a generous three out of ten. Um, it is simply uh-huh. not even like yeah maybe maybe a week four i'll give it a week four out of ten because it lacks Mm. the uh, the most important parts of any story i would rather see you know amateur cosplayers do uh like shoot this uh this season with their flip phones on vertical alignment um uh then you know and have like a a 10 out of 10 script uh, then see Miguel Sapochnik's, you know, like nine hour long cinematography that doesn't make a difference in the end. Um, to be to be completely honest, um, so that's it. It's it's a it's a week four out of ten for me. Mm, I was gonna say three, honestly. Yeah, uh, I could see I could see the argument for a four, or for even the sake of its potential. Yeah, uh, a five. Um, my thing is, like, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to even look at it as a soap opera, and I feel like this is even, like, a good, like, drama-esque show. Um, but I keep forgetting the fact that a lot of this, like, drama stuff people like because, you know, you do get characters you kind of get behind, and I forget that. Um, and there are, and I'm not sure if that's the strength of character, the strength of actor that kind of pulls out people's love for these characters. But to be fair, that that care is there. It's definitely yeah. there, and it's it is it is heard around the world, so to speak. Um, so I could see I could see people rating it higher, but I personally can't go over a four. But I'm gonna say three. I'm gonna be the the <laughs> I'm gonna be the cynic man uh, with the cold dark hearts made of uh, made of stone. Yeah, uh, and give it give it give it a three uh, out of ten. Very uh, well, Lady Stoneheart. There we have it. Um, and uh, looking in the chat, uh, would you prefer animals or f- uh, fast food chain? Because uh, I see Virgil and Oriya both arguing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, fast food, maybe just fast food in general. Uh, that's fast food. That is pretty much that. That, that is pretty telling for the whole um, uh, series, or maybe our whole pop culture at the moment. It's all just fast food. So uh, I, I totally, I totally, I'm totally down with that. That's so much better than gemstones. I mean, but what was I even thinking? Uh, fast food, Justin. How you would thinking? you rate this uh, as a fast food? Fast food. If I had to compare House of the Dragon to fast food, it would have to be. Ooh. I'll try to think of all the things I have at my disposal. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with. Um, I think Starbucks. Does that count as fast food? I supposedly, but I'm curious. A lot of people like Starbucks, so I'm curious. You know, on yeah, your pretty overrated um, and overpriced. <laughs> and Shots uh, fired! Yeah! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna rate it as a, a Starbucks, yeah. Because the, uh, you know, if you, get, if you get a plain coffee or like a, even barista coffee, like a cappuccino, it's horrible. Terrible! Um, it, it's not not the real deal it hasn't got the the decent ingredients but if you get some sugary bullshit from starbucks it's nice it tastes nice because it's sugary bullshit um you can't go wrong with sugary bullshit so yeah overrated overpriced and uh with the right amount of sugary bullshit on top it's uh it goes down there you go (laughs) Yeah, so we're going. Who's uh, with okay, me? That's, <laughs> who's with me? <laughs> uh, 
let us know uh, how crazy is in chat and what your score number wise or fast food wise is in the chat as well. We want your food foods. We want your numbers. I see Araya put a seven. Oh, your rose cuz you got your rose colored glasses on Araya. I go <laughs> with a 7.5. That's that's pretty generous. Uh, uh, but I do I do appreciate your your admission to to the, the your connection with the show. So that's fair. You know, I could see at least you have the the uh the heads up to to know that you got the glasses on. So that's fair. Um fast food. I'm thinking uh 7.5. That's like a 5 out of 5. Uh, sorry, 5 out of 10. Like uh, for, if for it's our IMDb. Style. <laughs> yeah, for well if style. it's like well um, actually with an actual average. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, go on. How do you rate? You know, it? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Little Caesars. Little Caesars. Oh I'm my God! Go I. <laughs> uh, okay. It is an extremely popular pizza chain here in the states, um, but it's also the one that you know people mm, just know what they're getting with what that with it, and they pretend it's better than it is you know <laughs> uh. and it also is is just cheese with cardboard on it and it, it's 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 constipation in a box is what it is um which is a, a metaphor for house of the dragon if i've ever heard of it um where it uh very popular it's got a lot it, it, it has a lot of things that sh like it think like a pizza should have uh but it's 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 missing a whole lot and cuts a lot of corners in order to make it uh to make it as widely distributed as it is so that's that's okay. where i'm at okay okay how does that compare with uriah's uh rating there of uh popeyes of po it's no chick-fil-a <laughs> No matter how hard it tries, but it's still pretty all right. <laughs> I mean, okay. It's so I, funny because I ate at, po at Popeye's like a week or two ago, and I got sicker than I've ever gotten. It was disgusting. I I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm I'm usually like on I'm usually on Uriah's side here with like <laughs> with like, a, but th that's just really funny in, in in the irony of that. And, and <laughs> So maybe in that sense, I would I would also agree with Araya in that it shouldn't have made me sick, but it did. Uh, <laughs> you're making a poll. I'm making a poll, guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm the poll guy. Oh my god. Um, so uh, let's let's see who's uh, whose rating is more accurate: Little Caesars, Starbucks, or Popeyes. Um, oh my I know god. what I'll be vote. I would be voting if if I were allowed to. Apparently, I'm not allowed to vote my own <laughs> poll. Um, anyway, <laughs> so um, okay. Well, since I'm not I'm not American, so I don't know. Pop, <laughs> I don't know the difference between Popeyes and Chick Fil A, but apparently Popeyes is a, is a bit of a knock knock off of Chick Fil A. Uh, something like that, where it, Popeyes is the Louisiana chicken place, where it's a lot of like southern fried chicken, but. It, it, uh, Chick Fil A is a much more like pinky out sort of chicken sandwich. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's a it's a it's a it's a lot more expensive, but also a lot. It's 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 a solid place to get food, uh, okay. because you know it's it, it's got a higher up kind of flavor and place for it. Um, How much but, is uh, a a chicken sandwich in Popeyes and Chick Fil A respectively oh, for us non-Americans? No. I'm trying to think of I haven't really eaten Popeyes, you get some really good combo stuff is the thing. And they have their legendary chicken sandwich thing, their Popeyes chicken sandwich that everyone like really, really talked about uh a year or two ago. Uh which ironically I haven't had because uh uh <laughs> well just because I haven't had a Popeyes nearby and I ha I ironically passed by the Popeyes, you know, a week or two ago when I was out of uh, out of town. Um so the Chick-fil-A sandwiches at uh Chick-fil-A, you know, are a lot more basic, but you know, they they are a lot more basic in like structure, but also the chicken is also really well made. 
and they they have they they have apparently this crazy the uh, you know bedding and sauce and stuff to it. That's what that's what pulls you in. If ah. For those tuning in, hey, welcome to our Chick Fil A stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how does yeah yeah? I'm trying to figure out ways uh, of how that connects to House of the Dragon, but uh, I think Uriah said it very well. Um, <laughs> no matter how hard it tries to be Game of Thrones, it's not, but mm-hmm. it's still pretty all right. I mean, that that is what I was assuming, Uriah. That was your comparison, actually. Um, but I, <laughs> I I do appreciate it. Um. Yeah, that that's uh let's finish off on that note then. Uh quick question to you uh Justin, is House of the Dragon trying to be Game of Thrones or is it trying to be its own thing? Cuz in interviews leading up to the show, they were very clear that it's not going to be Game of Thrones, it's going to be its own thing and oh people are inevitably going to compare but it's its own story with its own cast and everything. Uh were they right? Were they dirty liars? A lot of them. Well, I think marketing-wise, they wanted it to be. They marketed it as both its own thing, but also like. <laughs> but also totally Game of Thrones. Trailer-wise and whatnot, they marketed it as a Game of Thrones esque show, and then they made a show that was a lot more soap opera than two hundred years I think before they, Daenerys they even Targaryen. Intended. What? 200 years before Daenerys Targaryen is like how the how the first episode starts. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like I said, um, the first episode I the first episode doesn't count because the first episode was the reference 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 episode and then <laughs> yeah. Uh and then after that it, they just became their own thing of like drama and and <laughs> more drama <laughs> yeah okay well another little curveball um i i quite enjoy is uh uh it's emma darcy who who said in an interview uh that they were going to correct a few wrongs uh from game of thrones while totally being not game of thrones they were still going to correct a few wrongs happen in Game of Thrones. Uh, and I suspect that this had to do with the Doomsday Dagger, Aegon the Red Conqueror's uh, dagger that uh, has an ancient language uh, appearing when it gets hot. Uh, very original. Um, and, and, and that it would sort of justify the way Game of Thrones ended, which is kind of obvious trying to do. Um, doesn't matter what I think about that, but... Um, are are these things compatible that they can can correct a few wrongs while at the same time not like be, being its being its own thing uh, it it's it's so hard to judge because it 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 wants both you know and right. it, it it ends up not getting either but because of how big Game of Thrones is, I think it just it just edges out and ends up like getting the getting away with it no, no matter what. The, it tries to play both sides of the like we're doing our own thing, but also referencing and using the Game of Thrones like pieces that we have as references in order to pull in like the importance factor of all this show. Um <laughs> But as yeah. it is, I I just don't know. Even, I don't even know how to how to consider Game of Thrones at this point. So maybe I need to do some soul searching. Who knows? Yeah, could be it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I certainly think that they totally tried to be Game of Thrones. Uh, they even have the same intro music, and then have a lot of the other music, and there are so many things that they are, I mean, they're basically ripping off Game of Thrones in a lot of moments. You've got, um, basically, uh, you've got Alicent wearing Cersei's outfit, uh, which was, uh, which I thought was, I mean, that was not just a tiny nod to, to fans, that was like a slap in the face. Um, like, look, she's Cersei now! Um, which I did not appreciate, to be honest, it was too much. 
Um, and then they had the, a lot of lines, you know, a lot of um, sort of behavior or lines uh, straight out of Game of Thrones. Um, episode one, where Viserys shouts, my wife and son are dead, which is basically Tywin shouting, they have my son. Um, but yeah. So they're imitating Game of Thrones a lot, um, and they're trying to justify how Game of Thrones happened, even though nobody wants to justify how Game of Thrones uh, ended. Uh, nobody should try to do that either. <laughs> Everyone hates that, so why would you get on, on the side of how Game of Thrones ended? That's like, you're going against popular opinion. Isn't that exactly what you don't want to do in your situation? Anyway, so... Um, yeah, um, I, I, I think that's highly contradictive uh, of them, and they're just shooting themselves in the foot and kind of uh, pissing everyone else in the face. So, uh, not, not great. Not great, Ryan Condal, or, you know, uh, no, no more. Please stop, just stop. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely not Game of Thrones, though, in the sense that it's not good. Um, start with no attention to detail. Apart from some symbolism, I suppose. Uh, but that's all. Ab that's about all I have to say for now, uh, guys. We are working on a big, big uh, seasonal review um, about this season. I hope you're looking forward to that because I am looking forward to showing it to you. Uh, we are working on every error, and we are working on the in a nutshell videos as well. So lots of content about H House of the Dragon to look forward to, and then we will be doing more. Um, uh, we'll be doing more Game of Thrones related stuff uh, as well as a podcast uh, where we get uh, Justin's fresh uh, take in 2022 about uh, watching watching Game of Thrones for the first time with his fresh new perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm. uh, there's, there's a lot coming up. So stay tuned, like and subscribe if you haven't already, guys. It helps us grow and all that good stuff and helps you get notified when we post. So don't miss a thing. Uh, we did. He's gone full. He's gone full YouTuber, guys. Get out of here quick. It's, it's, run, it's consuming run me. <laughs> run. It's consuming me. And run before it consumes you too. Um, Get out of here while it's still while there's still time. Uh, uh, well, we so we just released. Us, guys. We released another video of a couple days ago. Uh, go watch that if you haven't already, and drop a comment and let us know what you thought. Join the Discord channel! <laughs> oh my uh, god, shut up! <laughs> I'm going full circle. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, last but not least, thanks for joining us on this wonderful finale stream. Um, thank you to Uriah and Virgil, uh, Shukri, and um, uh, everyone who joined uh, and stuck with us the whole, the whole way been a long stream today um and i hope you enjoyed it as much as uh, we enjoyed um doing it next week uh we uh, we might have a little break next week uh but we might just um hop on and bring you more uh live streams because we uh thoroughly enjoy this uh hanging out with you guys um and just uh just interacting and see what the getting our hands right on the pulse of the fan base and the, oh, the people gosh. out there so um yeah we'll see what we we come up with we do have some ideas about uh maybe fixing house of the dragon all that good so uh yeah uh thank you once again and to my esteemed colleague uh, justin anderson thank you very much for That's joining me, me. and uh mm -hmm. i'll see you next time all of you all, all right. of you best wishes bye bye